Well, praise the Lord and good day to you. Welcome to Cross Time with Pastor Curtis. I'm Pastor Curtis Hutchinson here in the studio at Crossway Church in Queen City, Texas. Glad that you found us on social media somewhere, whichever avenue it is you found us. I know if you're watching right now, you're watching on the Crossway Church Queen City, Texas Facebook page. And I have a couple of other Facebook pages, Curtis Hutchinson and Pastor Curtis, where each morning between 7 and 8 o'clock, closer to 7, uh, I post on there one Bible verse every morning on each page and always in the context of Jesus Christ and what he did for us at Calvary, the context and focus of all the Bible. And uh, I'm just so thankful to be alive right now in all the excitement that's going on all over the world, even though much of it is horrific, it's sad, it's terrible, but it is the fulfillment of the end of this day that we're in, this period of time that we're in. And uh, I, I'm just excited uh, to be here, to be a part of uh, the, the, what God is doing. What God is doing is He is preaching the gospel to the ends of the earth. That's what God's doing. He's, he's putting the, uh, the other nations and he's doing things and he's in control of all that's going on. But God's people are to be focused on the gospel, preaching, sharing, teaching, singing, living the gospel. It is the focus of God. It's the focus of the church, or it's supposed to be. And I'm just excited to be a part of it. You can find everything we do here at Crossway Church on the YouTube channel, which is Curtis Hutchinson 316, the website, thecrosswaychurch.com. You can sow an offering to the Lord there. You can find, if you click on the store icon, the commentaries that are written and available out there. And uh, you can just be greatly blessed if you love the gospel, the message of the cross, the focus of God, the focus, or it's supposed to be, of every believer that's on the planet. Hallelujah. We are teaching in 2 Peter. We've got five verses left, and we're going to begin to cover those this morning, these last five verses in 2 Peter chapter 3. Uh, this is going to be wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. There is so much knowledge, information, truth, uh, warning, encouragement, instruction, these last five verses are just so wonderful and so powerful. And I want you to think about this. Out of the billions of people who have lived on this planet, there's only been a, a just a just the tip of an ink pen amount of people that God has allowed to speak on his behalf to where it would become scripture. Peter is one of those very few. I want, you, I want to say that again. Out of all the billions of people that have lived, there's only been just a, a minute few men that God has moved on and spoke to and spoke through with such authority that he would even give them the authority to write it down, authority and direction of the Holy Spirit to write it down so we could have it today. And, and Peter is one of those. Even, I mean, few among Israel were ever used to not, there were more, I'm sure, that might have been used of God to proclaim different things. But those who had the authority to write down what would be called the Word of God throughout the years, even today, were a very few in number. And even the disciples that Jesus had, there were even few among them that he gave the authority to speak on his behalf after he was gone and to write down and, and what they would write would literally become Scripture, the Word of God. And this is so profound. If you would only 
uh, appreciate in a greater way the Word of God. We, we're beyond what we can imagine blessed to have the Word of God. It, many, many years, the Word of God was not even in print like it is. And it's only been that way as far as what we're calling, what we're talking about Bibles since less than 500 years ago of this 2,000 year period of the church age. So you should be shouting the high praises of God every day to have a Bible. And God forbid we have 10 in our home and they're not being opened. It is the Word of God. And what's in the Bible that's not the direct quoting from God's mouth is what he had men pen and write down that other men would say or even that the devil would say that we need to have the knowledge of. And my friend, these last five verses in Second Peter bring with it such instruction, like I said, warning, comfort, edification, uh, wisdom, direction, correction. I mean, uh, warning. Every, these last five verses of this very last letter of which Peter only wrote two, and this is the last one, and I pray that, that God would even give me a greater hunger for the Word of God, because my Bible tells me the Word of God is God. The Word of God became flesh. If I want to know Jesus, who is the living Word of God, then I've got to know my Bible. I've got to know what the Bible says. Hallelujah. I'm not learning Christ if I'm not learning Him from the Scriptures. I'm not growing in my relationship with Christ based on my feelings and emotions. I'm growing if I'm walking in more truth that He sent His Spirit of truth to guide me in into. Hallelujah. It's not just feel good and warm and fuzzies. Matter, matter of fact, it ain't got nothing to do with that. Nothing. All it pertains to is Scripture and how will we accept Scripture to the point that our hearts believe it and our feet are in it. Hallelujah. So as we get ready today in this uh, part number three of Second Peter chapter three, on this sixth day of November, 2023. And let me just say, before we dig into the Word this morning, I hope the Lord comes today. I hope today is that great day that He comes and takes us away and snatches us out of here and takes us to the judgment seat of Christ. I hope this is the day where we're all gone in the twinkling of an eye and those who have oil in their lamps and we're with our Lord forever and ever. And I, I hope today Today's the day. I'm literally looking for my Lord today. I hope you are. I hope you're looking for your King today to come for His people. I hope you're looking for the captain of your salvation who's coming for the his good soldiers to take them away, my friend, to equip us. When we leave here, we're going to be equipped for his return with him. And we just cannot imagine what we're in for in the days ahead. My goodness, we cannot imagine, we cannot contain it that which we are in for in the days ahead. And I'm talking about it could be today that we leave this old evil, wicked world that we've been crucified to and it to us. And my goodness, we're, we're not of this world, but we're still in it. So while we're in it, let us occupy and be about the Father's business, which is the publication of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and through that message, God can equip His people, bless His people, quicken His people, awaken His people, hallelujah, bring us back to a place of living in Christ Jesus and not just being by name alive, but living in Christ Jesus. Glory be to God, hallelujah. So let's look at this where we are today. Second uh, Peter chapter 3, verse 14 the Bible says, wherefore. So you always have to stop right there to go back and look at what for. Because therefore or wherefore, if you just open your Bible and you keep going, you're going to miss the specifics 
And what needs to be imparted into your heart if you don't go back and look at what this word is pointing to, wherefore. So let's just go back one verse this morning and look at verse 13. Nevertheless, we, according to his, nevertheless, we, according to his, and we could keep backing up because the word nevertheless also points you backwards. But for the sake of time, we'll start right here in verse 13. Nevertheless, we, talking about God's people, not everybody that claims to be the people of God, those who are the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus, Galatians tells us that. Not everybody is the children of God. Everyone is the creation of God. We're all God's creations, but the new creation of God, the one that is eternal, is only in Christ Jesus. So not, we're all not children of God, but we're all the creation of God, just like the trees and the grass and everything else. But <coughs> those who are the new creations have been made that through their faith in Christ Jesus, through faith in what he did on the cross in dying for us. Hallelujah. So nevertheless, we, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwells righteousness. And don't get me started on righteousness, my friends. It's probably my most favorite subject in all the word of God because I believe it holds the key to everything we need here in this on this journey. It's the path we walk on, it's the robe we've been cloaked with, it's the it's the the place of service we've been given, servants of righteousness. It's that which if we love, our God says he'll pour the oil of gladness in our hearts, hallelujah, if we seek it before everything else, uh, that he will add everything to our lives that we need. If we hunger and thirst for his righteousness, we will be filled, hallelujah, glory be to God. It is the key that unlocks everything we need to know about this journey and, and the revelation of God's righteousness is only revealed in the gospel, Romans 1, 16 and 17, hallelujah. And I'm thankful to know that, that Proverbs 8 and 8 says, all of the words of God's mouth are in righteousness, hallelujah. And all his words are in Righteousness and his righteousness is only revealed in the gospel. Hallelujah. So every word that God has spoken, your entire Bible must be seen in the light of what Christ did at the cross because he was made unto us righteousness. 1 Corinthians 1 and 30 tell us that. Hallelujah. So there is no righteousness without looking unto Jesus and what he did at Calvary. There is no impartation of the word of truth unless we hear it in its righteous context. Second Peter 1 and 1, faith comes through the righteousness of God and our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm writing commentary presently in Isaiah 64, my goodness, let's just go look at it this morning. We're not in a hurry. Amen. Isaiah 64, something very powerful there that I just saw and that I, I, I'm writing. <clears throat> if I can find it, if I can find it, it says in in, in Psalm 64, uh, I thought it did. Uh, here it is. Here it is in Isaiah. I'm sorry. In Psalm 65, make a note of this. Psalm 65. If you're following my Facebook pages every morning, my Curtis Hutchinson Facebook page. Uh, we are right here, right now. Psalm 65, one verse every morning between 7 and 8 a.m. as it ties to Calvary, as we'll see here. And I'm talking about righteousness for a moment. My goodness, we could talk about it forever. Christ is going to come and reign. We're going to reign with him for a thousand years on this earth. And his rod of instruction, his rod... Of, of, of authority is going to reign in righteousness. Watch this, Psalm 65, 
verse 5. By terrible, meaning awesome, things in righteousness will you answer us. God's, God's not talking to anybody outside of in righteousness. He's not talking to anybody. He doesn't save anybody outside of their heart yielded to the truth of Christ and Him crucified. And Romans 10 and 10 tells us what happens when we believe with the heart unto what? Unto righteousness. Then the mouth begins to declare that salvation. Hallelujah. So watch this. By terrible things, Isaiah 65 and 5, by terrible, awesome things, in righteousness will you answer us, O God of our salvation, who is the confidence of all the ends of the earth and of them that are afar off upon the sea. Look at the four words, and this is in my commentary that you will see if you follow along there. Uh, the word righteousness is in this one verse. The word God, the word salvation, and the word confidence. My Lord, that'll preach. That'll preach for weeks or months, hallelujah. It surely will, praise God. But I wanted to share that with you this morning because that's what we're looking for. L look, let's read this again in verse 13, 2 Peter chapter 3. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, are looking for new heavens and new earth wherein dwells Righteousness, no sin, no evil, no wickedness, no mistakes, no uh-oh, I'm sorry, no, none, just nothing but righteousness, which is, which, what is, what is a city, what is a new heavens and a new earth that in them only dwell righteousness? That means there's nothing in the new heavens and the new earth that is not perfectly in accordance with with the new creation that was made in Christ Jesus on the cross. It is the result of his work at Calvary, every bit of it. All the fruit that will forever be there is the fruit of Jesus Christ and his work on the cross. There will never be sin. There will never be tears. And, and I want to share with you this morning. Well, let's, let, let, let's read this again. Nevertheless... We, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwells righteousness. Now I'm going to give you these scriptures, and I know you already know these, but you can make a fresh note, go read them. I'm going to read them to you this morning right here where this promise is found. It's, it's found in one of the places it's found in is Isaiah 65, verses 17 through 19. You see, the promise of a new heaven and a new earth, my friend, is not something that's new. It's been prophesied. It, it, listen, Isaiah was about somewhere around 800 years before Christ came, and it's been 2,000 years since he came. So close to 3,000 years ago, the new heaven and the new earth was prophesied about in your Bible. And again, this is where we say, thank you, Lord, for the word of of God. Hallelujah. Thank you for the prophetic word that you have preserved unto this very day for us that we might read it and be comforted through the faith that comes when we hear it and believe it. And look at what it says in the prophet Isaiah's writings in chapter 65 verses 17 through 19. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth. And the former, this is what I love, will not be remembered. Somebody needs to say amen. Think about that. I'm going to read that again. <laughs> hey, watch this. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered nor come into mind. What you're about to enter into, child of God, very soon is something so phenomenal and beyond what our minds can contain that it's going to eliminate all your memories of what was. Woo. What you're about to lay your eyes on, 
What you're about to see and behold, the new heavens and the new earth are going to be so phenomenally beyond what our minds now can contain that just the appearance of it and our experience of being there in it is going to eliminate all memories of the former earth and the former heavens. And I'm going to read this again. It's too good just to read it and move on. Watch this now. For behold, that means take notice. Take notice. It's going to happen. Behold it. See it by faith. Expect it. And the New Testament says, look for it. Hallelujah. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered nor come into mind ever again. Hallelujah. But be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem rejoicing and her people a joy. See, this is all the creation that's found in Christ. This is the the new creation. Anything about the new creation has been established through the death of Jesus. At the cross of Christ, Jesus literally, that's where he became the end of everything he once began, and the new and eternal beginning of the new creation of God that is without end eternally. I want you to know that. It all took place at Calvary. At the cross is where he became the ending of all that he once began because of what we did to all he once began. And everything perished in him at Calvary. And he there on the cross became the new and eternal abiding place for all God's people. In Christ is is the new creation, whether it be people or the, the way that God, through that one avenue that he would be able to create a new earth, and new heavens, and where you see, and I'll show you, where you see the new heavens and the new earth mentioned in the Bible, Jerusalem is always on the scene right there with the promise. Right there with the promise. That's because when this earth passes away and the new heavens pass away, then, and that's right at the end of the 1,000 year period that Christ and his people with rain will be reigning on this earth at the end of that uh, as we spoke of uh, earlier in the last session will be when the earth, this earth and the heavens burn up and are destroyed by fire and what happens to the people <clears throat> what happens to all of us at the end of that period? What happens to everybody who, <clears throat> who's left who believes on, in Christ? Well, it's got to be a rapture. And we must, the Lord must at that time going to be, he must be going to take us to the new Jerusalem so that when the new earth and the new heavens come into being than the new Jerusalem. We're already in it, my friend. We're not watching it come down because the earth was burnt up. We're already with him in the new Jerusalem as it comes down on the new earth because the new Jerusalem is not going to set on an old burnt up earth. It's going to set on the new earth with the new heavens in view. My goodness, that's good. I hope you're encouraged today. Verse 18 In Isaiah 65, verse 18, But be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem rejoicing and her people a joy. And I will rejoice in Jerusalem. You ought to shout now, hallelujah. The Lord says he will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in his people. 
and the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her, nor the voice of crying. If you look at what's going on over there in Israel and in, in, in the surrounding areas, my friend, that's coming to an end. I don't care how bad it looks now, and it's going to get worse than it could ever look now. It's going to get way worse. Two-thirds of Israel is going to perish. Two-thirds of them is going to perish. Read uh, the book of Zechariah, the great prophet. The Lord prophesied through him and tells what's going to happen. It's going to get greatly ugly. I'm going to stop just for a minute, and, and I'm going and to come back to another scripture in the Word of God concerning the new heavens and the new earth. But I have to say this as the Lord stirs my heart this morning. I want you to know what's going on right now like it's never gone on before. There is an exposure taking place now. We're, we're in a time and a season in, in, all over the world where things are being exposed as to their true state. And that is going to intensify the closer we get to the final greatest revealing and greatest uh, exposure, which is who God is in the person of His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, as He comes to reign for a thousand years. Everything is being exposed. You remember some five, six years ago, as everybody's always known that, that the political uh, world in America has been evil, whether it be Republican or Democrat, and 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 you know things started being saying, you know, on, in that realm, like we're going to claim the swamp, and 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 things started being revealed that although we've known that political, politically, and even in this nation, there's it's been full of evil and wickedness and greed on both sides of the fence. Makes no difference which side, and one worse than the other, obviously by what they choose to believe and they're open with it and they're more open with it and more open with it and and just look at homosexuality the, uh, you know that abomination uh, used to hide in the closet now it's out and open in the streets it's in positions uh, it's in the churches it's in everywhere it's in author authoritative places even among those that claim to be the church uh, there's a great exposure taking place the the news media begin to be exposed and everything, everybody started, wow, this has always been going on. Wow, and it's taking place now. It's, and it's intensifying. Everything is being exposed. So let me say to you, you better make sure you're, you're where you need to be standing, that you're following the message and the messenger you need to be following. You better make sure that because everything's being exposed, those that talk out both sides of their mouth, they're being exposed. Those that are just flat out teaching nothing right, they're being exposed. Those that are teaching the gospel and focused, determined to know nothing else but Christ being crucified, they're being exposed. Everything is coming out of the shadows, my friend, and it is being exposed. And you better be found standing where God planted you. You better come out from among those who are not not standing there with you. I don't care what your past has been with them. I don't care how long your family went to that, whatever that is. You better be found standing where you need to be standing. And that is where God planted you, and that's by faith in the likeness of his death. That's the grace of God, hallelujah. Everything's being exposed. Things are coming out. Things are being revealed. People, that's why people are having to chew. The people dabbled for a long time with these and with these, and now they've had to choose. They've had to choose, and unfortunately, many choices have not been correct, and, and that's been exposed. Exposed the reality. I mean, we can't say this today and then this tomorrow. That stuff's being exposed. Hallelujah. And so I'm just bringing this information to you. You already know it that things are being exposed. Everything is being exposed with great intensity. So you and I, as God's children, what what we better be found in as we're as God exposes us to the world is the one faith 
that we have received through the righteousness of God. Everything in this world is growing more and more spiritually. A hatred for Israel, a hatred for Christianity, it's growing more and more spiritual. I've known for a long time everything that you see, all this animosity, everything is headed straight to Jesus Christ and everything that's for him and his way of the cross, everything that is for him, the true Jesus and his way of the cross because that's what determines if we have the right Jesus, hallelujah, that everything is headed, that God, those that are they're going to be exposed, those who are holding the true gospel, the true righteousness and holiness, the true grace of God, and everything that is trying to be two-faced and double-tongued for more money, for more people, for more this or for more that, is be, it's being exposed now. It's being exposed now. And so we've got to make up our minds where we're going to stand. Hallelujah. Where we're going to stand, not in, not in man's anything. And you're going to be exposed in the days ahead, child of God. You're going to be tested by your God to see if you'll stand in the place he planted you because he doesn't water the ground anywhere other than where he planted his vineyard. You can pray for the latter rain till you're blue in the face. You can lay down on the carpet and cry tears, literal legitimate tears, until you stain the carpet. But in, if you're not planted in the likeness of his death by faith, if the cross is not your focus, your focus and your ministerial focus without mixture, that you're not going to experience the rain because the, the latter rain is only going to rain on the ground that God planted his vineyard in. You need to understand that, my friend. It ain't raining out there in some uh, place that can't grow what God wants to see the fruit of. Hallelujah. So let's get back. That, that was extra today. That was of the Spirit of the Lord today. That was extra for you to be able to prepare yourself and embrace yourself for what's coming. The only way you can do that is not by a thousand cans of beanies weenies and um, a thousand gallons of water. There's nothing wrong with having extra food and extra water and you're probably going to need it not long from now if the Lord tarries. But how you embrace for what's coming and how you're prepared is by the Spirit of God being allowed to guide you into more truth, all truth. Trusting in the way of the cross. Now, some don't even think they need to preach it all the time. So those same folks are going to try when this mess hits us like a falling brick wall in the days ahead. If the Lord tarries, them same people are going to try, they're going to also try trusting in other things and they're going to, they're going to give up. They're, they're, they're not going to be the testimony that they could have been had they allowed the Lord to make them determined to know nothing other than Christ in him crucified. That'll be your standing army in the last days. That'll be your standing, there won't be many. And that's what'll make them look like they're not right to a lot of people because there won't be many. It won't be popular. It won't be the money maker. It won't be the pew filler. But it will be the move of God because it'll be all focused on the Lamb and what He did at Calvary. Let's read another scripture concerning the new heaven and the new earth, which is what John wrote about in the book of Revelation, chapter 21, verses 1 and 2. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. You do know there's not going to be any more seas on the new earth. Not going to be any sea, not going to be Atlantic Ocean, Pacific Ocean. There will be rivers, but there's not going to be any seas. The Bible tells us right here. And I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And that's another reason I believe that we're already in the new Jerusalem by the time it comes down to sit on the new earth. And this is we're 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 very close to this. 
what's coming. Very close to this. So, now we can get back here where we were today in verse uh, 14, back to the word wherefore. Now, because of all of that, beloved, seeing because you are looking for such things, then be diligent that you may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. That's not talking about found of him when he comes. That's talking about now. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord found Noah receiving his grace. Is the Lord finding you and me today in the peace he provided through the blood of his son's cross? Because only as we walk with our faith exclusively exclusively there, will we be without spot and blameless. You see, it's the blood of Jesus that washes away all sin. Not just when we were born again did we become justified, but through that shed blood of Jesus, but even in this walk of fellowship with our Savior, are we cleansed by that same precious blood Moment by moment, day by day, week by week, month by month, year after year. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have, what light is that? The light that shines on what's going on in me that still needs to be cleansed. Listen, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Christ cleanses us from all sin, all unrighteousness. That's an ongoing thing. Not our justification. We've been justified. Romans 5.1 says we've been justified by God. We now have peace with God. The problem is not between us and God anymore. The problem now is in me. What is trying to prevent me from the experience of me today being found by my God in experience in this peace, in this peace. Everything that God is offering you to experience is something you have to be in. And that word in speaks of your faith in the death of Jesus and your union with him in his death. Because for you and I to live, it's the new creation in Christ that lives. It's nothing of the old. It's not the flesh. It's not the old man, and it's not our flesh. We can only live because Christ now lives in us, and the expression of his life is through the new man, not anything fleshly. It can be expressed through this mortal fleshly body, but it's got to be the new man through this fleshly mortal body expressing the life of Christ. We're, we're not here to express ourselves. We're here. The new creation expresses Christ, who he is and what he's provided. The new creation is all about Jesus and what he did to provide who we are and what we are now and where we can be found by our God in every moment. And no one does this perfectly, but you and I should be striving to be found by our God every moment in peace. That means in the blood cleansing place because in peace means we're walking with him in peace. And when the light that we're walking in, that he's in, will, I said not might, but we'll shine on things that still need to be washed away from my experience. Listen, I'm justified. Now God is trying to, he's trying to justify my fruit. Everything I do that people look at and claim it's good might not be the Spirit of God providing or, or producing that through me. It may not be. Listen, look at this example. In peace is where we have to be found. That only happens when our faith, hear me very carefully, when our faith is deliberately and consciously 
in the forefront of our mind, not subconsciously. You don't ever reach a place where you're just living for God and by the, well, you know, it just comes to me natural. No, it don't come to you natural, honey. You have to have the Lord Jesus Christ and his redemptive work in the forefront of your minds. If you don't, listen, you can't bring subconscious thoughts going on in the back of your mind to the obedience of Christ. You can only capture those thoughts as they're there in your mindful, being mindful in your consciousness. You don't bring unconscious thoughts in the subconscious of your mind captive to the obedience of Christ. You bring those thoughts that are in the forefront of your mind. You looked at that and you looked at that and because you saw that, whatever that is, it caused you to kind of reach for that. And if you don't capture that thought and take it to the cross, that thought is going to keep running till your hands keep reaching long enough till you grab a hold of whatever that is, honey. And when you grab a hold of it, it's going to capture you. And you're not going to like what it does to you. Oh, it might feel good when you first grab it. It might look good enough to go grab. But when you grab it, it's going to bite your head off, boy. You better know that. When you let the lust of our flesh start looking at something, you better let the Holy Spirit, let his instruction be that which you go after, that which you follow after. Because if it's not, and you keep looking at whatever that is, there's a list of a thousand things. Whatever you, This all happens not in the subconscious, my friend. This happens in the front of your mind. You are conscious of what you're looking at. And as a Christian, you're also conscious of the truth that you can either choose in that moment to yield your lustful flesh to that and go after it. And it's going to cause you more problems than you can shake a stick at. Or you can choose to serve obedience under righteousness, meaning exercise your faith in the death of Jesus. And that, that trite was trying to pull you into it through the lust of your own flesh, you can bring the, the truth of Calvary in between that thing and you and that thing there got captured instead of it capturing you. Glory be to God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. What a great truth. That's the power of the cross uh, is able to do that. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, let's move on here. So, But let me say this. Anything you're going to experience as a Christian that Jesus died for you to have, you're going to have to find your way in it. In it. The Bible talks of in faith, in righteousness. Here we're seeing in peace. And that in is, is, it reveals to us it's, it's, a, it's a specific location. Where is this location where righteousness is found? And as I ministered yesterday morning, that we're weak in Christ, 2 Corinthians 13, 4. But 2 Timothy chapter 2, I believe it was, where Paul told Timothy not to be strong in Christ Jesus, but to be found strong in the grace of that's in Christ Jesus. See, everything that you're going to experience, you got to find your way into it. And there's not but one way into righteousness, into joy, into peace, into grace. And it's through your faith, your yielded heart, surrendered moment by moment to the very death of Jesus and your union with him in that death, my friend, that is what it means to be found by God in peace. And we know it's true because the result of being found in peace without spot and blameless has to pertain to the blood. Because the blood is the only thing that can give us access into this peace, Colossians 1 and 20, he made our peace by the blood of his cross. Not any other way. He made our peace 
by the blood of his cross. That's why you and I, when we believed upon Christ, Romans 6, 3 tells us we were baptized, immersed into his death, into the place where he shed his blood into him, into his death, because there's where God justified us by that blood. To be found in peace before God, you've got to have your faith in the cross. That means in the death of Jesus. That means in the blood he shed, not only to initially wash you clean and give you a justified position in Christ, but you've got to fight to keep your faith in the death of Jesus so that you can experience this place in your condition, in your experience. This is now being found of him. In, is God, is he finding you in peace? I'm not talking about a peaceful land. I sit on my back porch all the time. I was walking back to the house last night after walking the trash can out to the road. I, I cannot walk out there and back home without thanking my God. It never has happened that I take my trash can out, way out there, and then walk back without looking up and saying, thank you for the quietness and the peace of this property that you've given me right here where I live. I'm so appreciative of that, of what the Lord has blessed me with, where I am, what he's given me, but more than all of that that can be stripped away in a moment of time, I'm more grateful for the peace, the inner peace that can never, ever be stripped away from me as long as I keep my faith anchored in the one who made it for me at the cross. And not just in the name of Jesus. My heart, when it's yielded to my unity with Christ, which is not existent outside of my unity with him in his death, that's where I became one with him of the same spirit. Those that be joined to the Lord are of one spirit. I became one with Jesus at Calvary where he made my peace. He made peace with, for, for me with God so that God's wrath could be removed. And, and that is a done deal. I'm justified. Peter was justified in Antioch when he became a hypocrite there for a, a little bit. But, but his fruit, was he was not found in peace. He was found in turmoil, and the Bible says fear. And there is no peace in fear. Peace is that which we have that's inner because peace had, has been made with God for us through the blood of Jesus. And I have a position that's guaranteed. It's a legal status. God has slapped the gavel down, so to speak, and his gavel was the death of Jesus. His gavel in his seat of court was the blood of Jesus, the death of Christ. That was, it is finished. That was the gavel of God being spoken by his son. It is finished. The old creation over the new creation, inaugurated, hallelujah. Glory be to God. So I want you to understand, most Christians have no idea of what I'm talking about, of being found by God right now in peace. Being found by the God who sent his son to save us and we're saved, we, we, we don't have enough awareness in our lives, moment by moment, of our God. And again, none of us do. None of us do. We can grow in a greater awareness of our God with us, our God in us, our God attempting to guide us. And the Bible says in Job 7, 18, that he tries us every moment. 
You ought to write that down, my friend. You ought to go highlight that in your Bible. He's trying you every moment. What's that mean? Read 2 Corinthians 4 and 11. He, he's trying to see if you will accept moment by every moment what he's delivering you unto, which is the death of Christ. Because the most important thing to God is not what we have to go through in suffering, but how we accept moment by moment what his son did at Calvary. Because the most important thing to God is the expression of his son in the church, through the church. That's the most important. God's more concerned about how we respond to some situation that's awful for us. Awful. It was awful what they did to you. It was awful what they said about you. It was awful what they planned and carried out against you. But God's more interested not in how they treated you and cut you low, He's more interested in your opportunity to express His Son. And that will not happen unless we understand that God is trying us every moment to see if we'll accept our assigned by God, designated place by God to abide in Christ, which is in our unity with Him in death. I am crucified with Christ. But yet I live. But wait a minute, it's not me any longer. It's Christ living in me now. And the life I now live with the new eye, not the old eye. I, the old eye was crucified. The new eye, I live now by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Hallelujah. Are you grabbing a hold of this today? Are you grabbing a hold of this truth today, allowing it to grab a hold of you? There's never a moment in your life that the Holy Spirit is not trying to deliver you. Well, let me say it a better way. There's never a moment in our lives when the Holy Spirit is not delivering us unto death, but we have to accept that truth, that reality. Why? Because it's the only place that you can be found in all the things that you've been offered to be in. The grace that's in Christ Jesus. The peace that's in Christ Jesus. You entered into Him by faith in His death. And if we bear any fruit that's of him, it will be through the same faith in his death. This is people who disagree with this prove, I'm talking about the church, prove how far away from these truthful realities that we've gotten. That's why in the days ahead, my friend, there is a great exposure taking place. It's taking place. Those who were just flat out not preaching the gospel ever, and those who are sometimes, but then other times, they're not. Or they're allowing men to come in with a whiskey bottle and make the people drunk and confused. And all that can happen in, con in confusion is contradiction. And in that place of contradiction that God calls the double mind, there's no expectation that we can have to receive anything of the Lord. That's what the Bible says in the book of James. So it's either we're growing to become determined to know nothing other than where we're being delivered every moment, which is Christ and Him crucified, so that we can express Christ for Christ's sake, or we're moving away from that and allowing other things to come in and to take... One of the two is taken over. One of the two is taken over. We individually or we ministerially are be, being infiltrated by leaven that's taking over and causing us to start changing the way we word everything and milk down what we shouldn't be milking down. And it's pushing, it's pushing this truth out by the leaven that's coming in or the truth of Calvary is like a burning fire, my friend, where righteousness and peace met. God kindled a fire right there in the hearts of his people and that fire, because our God is a consuming fire, can take over and wash wash the leaven out. But one of those two things is happening and it's being exposed where the reality 
of that is. And we can make excuses all day long just like folks who are out there making excuses for everything. But it's being exposed and everything is being exposed by the light of God. The Word of God is still the light that exposes everything. All error is exposed by the truth of God. Remember that. Wherefore, beloved, verse 14, it seems like this is where we started. We didn't get very far today, did we? Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you're looking for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him. Let's talk about right now. While you're looking, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless. And again, when you start seeing in the word without spot and blameless, you're talking about the blood of Jesus. You're talking about the cross of Christ. It's in every verse of this Bible. I'm sorry that we hadn't known it. We hadn't seen it. I'm sorry that some reject that thought. I'm sorry that God's people are fighting against that reality, but I'm sorry. It's been that way since the old covenant. When Moses read the law of God, and the people said, Exodus 24, verse 8, 6 through 8, when Moses read the law of God, the people said, we will do it. We'll be obedient to the law of God. Well, Moses didn't say, no, you won't, you can't. What he did was, get this now, this is of utmost importance even for the New Testament. What he did was he then took the blood and he sprinkled it on the people. He sprinkled it on the Word and he sprinkled it on the altar. And a greater revelation of what happened there in that moment, in that day in Exodus 24 you can read about is found in the book of Hebrews also. And in the book of Hebrews, it it expands what really happened there of how the blood was sprinkled on the people and the word and the altar. And Moses declared this, Behold the blood of the covenant that the Lord has given to you, made for you, concerning all these words. Christians are either getting on board in this place where they were planted and becoming more determined to to move away from all these false, swelling words that promise men things now, great swelling words that promise liberty, but they can't ever deliver liberty. There's only one message that delivers liberty, and that's the message of Christ and Him crucified, the liberator and what He did and where He did it to liberate anyone who will only believe. Let me say it again. Everything's being exposed. Everything. The greater revelation of God's Word is being given for the application to those who will choose to walk in this great truth. Everybody else will be without it. They'll just continue to use God's Word outside of its righteous context. They'll just continue to only preach the cross in Romans 6, 7, and 8, and maybe a little bit in Galatians, but they won't preach it from Genesis through Malachi and Matthew through Revelation. They won't preach it. They won't, they, they're, they're not doing it. But the information is there. It's been there all these years. It's there. The opportunity is there. And God's ministers of righteousness are preaching this message of God's predetermination. God's predetermination. And His ministers will be determined to know nothing other than Christ and Him crucified. Again, we didn't get very far. We've only got five verses left, four now. But we'll start right here uh, this next Friday morning at 9 a.m. Don't make a note. Put an alert on your on your a reminder somehow and go to the YouTube channel Curtis Hutchinson 316 and subscribe so you'll get an alert in case you forget when we go live and you'll think oh wow wow man I can listen to this while I'm working while I'm driving whatever or you can go watch it after uh, the session is over but I encourage you to, to, to get hooked up somewhere where the boast is the cross of Christ ministries that are boasting in nothing but the cross of Christ Nothing. 
That's all God's ever boasted in is His Son and what His Son would do for those who would believe. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Glory be to God. We're here every Monday and Friday morning, 9 a.m. Central Time, and I want you to be with us. And if you can't, make sure you go and watch at thecrosswaychurch.com and, or the Facebook uh, page, Crossway Church, Queen City, Texas, or the YouTube channel, Curtis Hutchinson 316. I pray the Lord's touch be upon you today. And whatever it is that you're seeking Him for, I want you just to know that the cross of Christ was enough to provide you everything you need. Just begin to praise Him for what the Lamb did for you at Calvary. Just begin to praise Him for your healing. Praise Him for your deliverance. Praise Him for your victory. Praise Him for everything that you all already have in Christ Jesus. You already have it in Christ Jesus. That's what Jesus meant when he said, when you pray, if you believe you already have <clears throat> what you're asking for, you will receive. You already have everything you need in Christ Jesus through your faith in the cross, what he did in death there. And I pray that the Lord's touch would be a merciful touch on you today, your body, your soul, and your spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. If He stirs your heart to be a part of this ministry, to give to Him an offering through this ministry, you can do that at thecrosswaychurch.com or you can simply text the word GIVE to the number 903-231-5950. You can help us also put an expositor study Bible into the hands of an inmate who writes letters asking for that Bible because they've seen it in their prison, um, in, their, in their buddy's hands. And we mail 10 every week, and it costs $40 totally to get a Bible into the hands of an inmate. So if the Lord stirs your heart to do that, you can simply text the word GIVE to the number 903 231 5950, and one of the options is Bibles to inmates. I encourage you at least to pray about that and to get the Word of God, to help us get the Word of God into the hands of these inmates while they are in the position they're in and requesting that Bible. God bless you. I love you. I'll see you next time right here. Until then, stay determined to know absolutely nothing but Christ and Him crucified. We'll see you then.
that's not up to you so help me lord to keep